All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today we're going to pick up a 2009 Renault Clio that's just come in part exchange. We've given £500 for it, so on the face of it, it seems quite cheap. They always seem to sell well, these Clios. They're a perfect first car, but I've been told this one's a bit scruffy. It currently owes me £500. I was thinking if I spend another £500 on it, then it'll owe me £1,000. Quick maths. Then it should be worth 1995, 2250, 2295, something like that. So as long as it isn't too far gone, there should be a decent chunk of profit in it. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Right, let's go and have a look at it, shall we? I'll see you there. Well, we're here and it actually looks all right. It's black, it's got alloys, so it must be a dynamic model. They always sell really well, those. The bodywork on the driver's side looks okay and on the passenger side too. It is covered in rain though, so it is quite difficult to tell, I suppose. That, though, looks like a bit of a bargain for £500. Of course, mechanically it could be poor and the interior could be horrendous. I don't yet know. So I don't want to get carried away. I don't want to count my chickens before they've hatched. Let's see if there's any MOT on it then. As always, I'm going to do a vehicle history check using Car Vertical. So it's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg or the VIN. In this case, we know the reg. That is Papa Echo 09. Lima, Delta, Victor. Check vehicle. This will tell us whether it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or has outstanding finance on it. If you want to do one of these checks for yourself, and I urge you to do so before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike, then don't forget to use my promo code HIGHPEAK and you get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. Alternatively, click the link below in the video description. What's clever about this is it's checking databases in 35 different countries. It checks millions of cars. Right, and the report's done. So, ah. Pretty good. So it's never been stolen. The odometer is fine. It's never been clocked. There's no outstanding finance and there's no recorded damage. So we're clear. Right. I was told it had done about 90,000 miles. So the last MOT had done 85,000 miles and it's fairly consistent every single year. It's done about 5,000 miles a year. Right. Let's check the MOT then. Ah, oh, this is interesting. Right. The average market price for such a vehicle is £2,650. I think at £500, I can't really go wrong, can I? It's a 1.2 petrol, 74 horsepower, front wheel drive, manual, four cylinder. That'd be the perfect first car for some young lad, actually. I think the fact it's black and five door makes it quite appealing. Let's check the MOT then. So, ownership changed, failed an inspection. Okay, lovely. Well, that's quite good news. So, for the last three years, the last owner's had it since 2020. March 2020, just before lockdown. Uh, and the last three MOTs passed with not a single advisor item. Which is quite a good sign, isn't it? Right, let's go and have a look around it then. Now the rain's stopped. Okay, then. I sold a car just like this to my auntie about five years ago. That was exactly the same, and it's supposed to have silver door handles there and there, but they always wear away. So, with my auntie's car, I took it down to my body shop and asked them to paint the handles back to silver, and it looked really bright straight away. So, what can I see? I know it's difficult to tell when it's covered in water like this, but it does look quite tidy. Uh, we've got drum brakes on the back. We've got a harmonic tyre on about six mil of tread. The wheels could do with a refurb, but at this sort of price, I don't think I can afford to do them. I think I'll do the handles though. We've got a, what have we got on the front? Hmm. Never heard of that brand, but it's on about five mil of tread. We've got front fog lamps. It was supplied by Renault Liverpool. Headlamps could do with a buff. There's a little scuff there, which I could I could touch in. Oh, and there, actually. Yeah, I could touch that in. Get an up, upturned beer crate or a little milking stool and sit there for half an hour with my touch-up pen. Uh, that is on about four or five mil. That's not too bad. Brake discs. There's a slight lip there, but I think they'll pass an MOT. This side, apart from needing a good clean, doesn't look too bad. Again, paint the door handles. And then on this side, we've got the tyre brand is a Harmonic 
Aptani. Very good. On about five mil. Not too bad then, is it? Let's look around the back then. So we've got matching plates, so it's never been in a whack. This is all right, you know. So far, so good. Watch the inside bit right state. Right, so the other good bit of news is we've got two keys. One's broken. But we've, oh, that's not right, is it? We've got two keys, but that one's as smooth as... Can't think of something that's smooth. Well, they both work. I could get that one cut then, couldn't I? Right, well, inside isn't as good as the outside, I'll be honest. Bit of a rip there, bit of a rip there. On this kind of car, is it really worth spending £300 on the seat? Probably not, to be honest. Very grubby, very dirty, but it would all clean up. Around the back. Yeah, this isn't so good actually, it's full of dog hairs, but it would all clean. This has been a kiddie school run, kiddie abuse car this. We're missing a headrest. Full of dog hairs. But you know, it would all clean up. Got ice fix seats at the back, manual windows. It's also missing its parcel shelf, but the good thing with these kinds of cars, nothing will be expensive. We'll soon have a look on eBay and find a parcel shelf and headrest, I'm sure. I think with a good old clean, this would be all right, I think. Let's have a look under the bonnet then. In fact, oh, some sticky mess there. Try not to touch that. Some spare bulbs. Service history then, right. Got a receipt there for road tax. That's the current MOT then, which runs out in September. So it'll need a fresh one. We've got a receipt there at 13,000 miles from Renault. Now service book on these, is it in the back of the, pretty sure it's in the back of the owner's manual. That's weird. I thought the service book was in the back of the owner's manual on Renault's. It's not in the back of this bugger. Alright, well, no service book. It's a pity. I could always call Renault, couldn't I? Renault Liverpool. And uh, see if there's any history. Alright, there, la. Let's have a look if there's a cam belt sticker. Right, so apart from it being quite grubby, not too rusty or corroded. Vehicle inspection. Nope, I thought that was a cam belt sticker. Oh dear, it's broken my uh, broken my dipstick. That's the worst dipstick idea I've ever seen in my life. That actually looks quite clean. Because the only service receipt so far, that looks quite clean actually, doesn't it? Very good. No mayo. All good on the mayo front. Screen wash is topped up. It's little things like this which make me think the previous owners actually maintained it. In fact, they've put some screen wash in it. Honestly, it's little things. The amount of cars I get in these days, and even the screen wash doesn't work, because they can't be bothered topping up the screen wash. I thought that was a sticker then. So it is a Dynamic 1.2, 16 valve. Okay then. Steering wheels always wear on these. Always peels off and looks hideous. Right, well they can't start, can't start it with that one, can we? 90,000 miles. Radio 1. Okay, seat back a little bit. 
that's either somebody's pin pin number that's either someone's pin code or the radio code i suspect radio code so keep that safe uh apart from all this aldi center aisle bluetooth nonsense which can go we've got air conditioning someone's stuck on this uh little phone holder let's fire up Never had a cam belt. Now I can't. Can you do a cam belt on something like this? Profit-wise, uh, the fan only works on position four. That's a really common Renault issue. So it needs a new resistor there. Right. I'd be very surprised if my air conditioning works as well. Well, we've got no warning lights on. Central locking works. Both my windows work. It's unusual for Renault, this. Turn that down. So there is a little bit of prep here, isn't there? It's gonna need a service, MOT, whatever else my mechanic finds, heater resistor, parcel shelf, headrest, a very good clean, fresh set of mats. Maybe a cam belt. Might get my mechanic to, uh, to check it. I mean, it's 14 years old. If it hasn't had one, it's going to be crying out for one. Hmm. We'll cross that bridge, I think. Right, I think for now, then, we could take this for a drive and see how it performs. Ah, uh, right, we've got a check airbag light on. To get that checked out, then. And we're away. My clock's flashing, as if this has had a flat battery at some point. My clutch is very high. It's a little bit loose and knocky over bumps. Like it wants some sort of suspension work, bushes or track rod ends or something like that. Oh, that clutch is very high. So I could probably get this to slip if I tried hard enough. This 1.2 Renault engine is famously slow. I guess that's why it makes it a perfect first car, really. No one's going to get into any serious trouble in it. Good bit of driving there. Nobody's got any patience, have they? Nobody. What am I going to have to spend on this? Straight away, I could, if it passes an MOT and PDI checks okay, it could be 250 quid this. But I think if I end up putting a clutch in it, because it is quite high that. It's not slipping though. It's not slipping. Oh, it, it is. It is actually. It is slipping. It's in the very early early stages of it slipping and my airbag lights on it isn't really a retail car this oh and i've got that seat repair oh it's such a borderline case it isn't really a retail car but stock's a little bit thin on the ground and it seems to be that only the cheap stuff sells hmm. what i might do then is run this to my mechanics get them to check it out get them to price me up for a clutch and ask them to sharpen the pencil for me when they give me a quote if they could do this at a reasonable ish fee then i think it would be worth just about it would be worth doing i think yeah that clutch that clutch wants replacing i think rather than fix the upholstery on this seat i might just have a look on ebay and see if i can find one that matches if i could find a used seat for 50 quid it would save me the 200 pounds it would cost to repair it i think i'm gonna have to box quite clever on this one I mean, it does drive, it drives okay, really. I've driven far worse. I've driven far worse today, actually. Oh yeah, we're slipping. She's a rider. We've got a rider. Can you hear it? You press the accelerator and all you get is more noise. Right, what should I do? What should I do? Let me run it to my mechanics and see what they think. I'll get their second opinion. If I could get it prepped for... Well, what did Car Vertical say it was worth? Two and a half grand. It owes me 500 quid. If I could get this prepared for 750, so 750 plus my 500 pounds I paid for it, so 1250, then I could be looking at a W money, a 1250 profit. In which case it would be worth doing, wouldn't it? Right, leave this with me. I'll catch up with you later on. 
as you can probably tell from my slipping clutch, I'm back in the Renault Clio and I haven't had any of the repairs done. After we last spoke, I took it down to the car wash for a quick mini valet. I figured before my mechanic saw it, I better get it looking a little bit cleaner. As it turned out, that was just a big waste of time and 15 pounds because my mechanic didn't look upon it any more favorably. In fact, my mechanic actually signed the Clio's death warrant. I'll go through that in a second. Then we can add front brake discs to my list of faults. Apart from the faults that I knew about, my mechanic did unearth some more. Used car game's always interesting, isn't it? Isn't it always a barrel of laughs? To be honest guys, I've just had one of those days, one of those weeks, one of those months where nothing's going right for me. So the last thing I wanted to do was spend £1,500 on a £500 Clio, only to maybe get two and a half grand for it one of these days. What's the point? What is the point? A bit warm in here as well. And without wishing to turn into too much of a Debbie Downer, who's going to buy it? Somebody's going to come along at 2495 and expect a brand new car. So I think on this occasion, I'm just going to back this one away. I'm going to check airbag. Instead, what I've decided to do is sell this to another banger trader. Somebody that deals in these kinds of dross. Perhaps if things were different and I was in a slightly better frame of mind, I would have probably shopped around and tried to get it fixed, but just can't be bothered. I think what I'll do for you now then is pull over somewhere nice and scenic so I can drop the window and get some fresh air because I am sweating in here. And I'll talk you through exactly what my mechanic found wrong with it. Quite a long list. This is a classic example of why people should look after the cars better. Had they fixed things as and when they broke, this wouldn't be facing the scrapyard now, would it? It'd still be on the road, serving the previous owner well. But people don't. People are short-sighted, they don't look at the bigger picture. I'm not altogether sure this clutch will last the duration of this video. <laughs> ah, clutch. The unmistakable odour of a burnt clutch. On the bright side, it's quite a nice day. Sun's out for a change. Sorry if I've negged you out on this Friday night. Wasn't my intention. Let's hope that next week is a little bit better. Let's face it, can't be any worse, can it? Ah, here we'll do then. Can drop my window now and get some fresh air. Turn the engine off. Right, you ready for this? So my Clio needed a clutch. That was going to cost about 350 pounds. Heater resistor, that would have been about £60, job done. Airbag light, my mechanic reckoned it needed some sort of airbag module, that would have been another £70. The rear wiper, now I'm not sure if that's the wiper. Ah, the actual motor works, so it's just a blade. That's another £10, £12 maybe. They found the exhaust system to be heavily corroded, so that would need replacing, or at the very worst case, it would be advised, and then it's never gonna sell anyway with, a, with an advisory item like that. There's a oil leak coming from the gearbox. There's an oil leak coming from the head gasket. All four shock absorbers are corroded, so they'd all need replacing, and they would be minimum 100 pounds each, 120 pounds each, perhaps. The rear gearbox mounting needs replacing, and in addition to that, we've got some debushes that need replacing as well. So, the total job, my mechanic reckoned, would be about £1,500. So, it really wasn't worth the effort, which is sad. Had I paid the £1,500 to repair it, plus the £500 it owes me, I've still got a ripped seat, so that would have been another £100. I would still need to paint the door handles and give it a good buff. You're talking another £150 for that. So, there is really no profit in this car. It's a bit sad, really, because I hate to be in a situation like that. I like to try and save everything. But, but sometimes I think you've just got to know when things aren't going your way. And this, unfortunately, is one of those cases. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also TikTok. TikTok. Check me out. And yeah, cheers, guys. See you next time.